Hey guys and gals, Mama Bear here with a Daily Dash of Life. Today we will be going over the parts of a sewing machine. This is an older model, which is mine. This is a newer model, which is my daughter's. But the parts are still going to be the same. They just might look a little different. My machine is a Brother XL3750. That's what I'll be describing today, as well as a Brother CP100X. The CP100X is the more updated one. I would like to just start by saying to keep your manual handy. This is gonna be your best friend, especially in the beginning when you're trying to troubleshoot and figure a lot of stuff out. As you can see, I've even started to label mine. I really didn't know what some of the parts were called, what they were for, so I just made it easier for myself by doing that. On any sewing machine, you're going to have a spool pin which you can see here on both for your spool of thread and it can go up and down. Down position is for storage and up is for when you're working. This is the bobbin winder and it's the same on both machines. This is used for when winding your bobbin, you place this bobbin on the bobbin pin and then scooch and then you turn your foot control and it spins and on both machines the bobbin will spin until it's full then it will automatically shut off then you just take it off when you're done this is your thread guide it has two purposes the first one is to guide your thread as you fill your bobbin and the second one is to guide your thread as you sew. This is another thing that's on both machines. Here is the thread take up lever. Again it's going to be on both machines. Next to your spool pin and winder there's typically another hole for an extra spool pin. Here is where I have my stitch width dial, as well as the dial that changes the position of the needle. If I need one fourth of an inch, half of an inch, an inch, this is where I'm gonna change my seam allowance. On my machine, this is where my stitch width dial is and my change the needle position dial is but on the newer model, it's in this little panel right here. You have to press these buttons to do it. Here's my upper tension dial, which is up top on mine, but on my daughter's, this would be the upper tension dial on the newer model. She also has a speed dial that I don't have. All machines come with this little thread cutter it has like a little razor right here and then you put the thread over it and boop, cut it off. Here's where I have my noodle threader, but it stopped working soon after I got the machine. And my daughter has had hers for two years now and hers has stopped working. It's pretty typical for that to happen. Most people just manually insert the thread through the hook. This is where your bobbin case would be. Here's my flatbed attachment to give me more working space. And for storage, we just store it like this. Most machines come with the attachment. I don't know about all of them, but I think they do. This is how they usually look. And this can be a storage compartment. Mine has one as well. But then, like I said, when you change it out, for your table this is how it's going to look this is where your bobbin case would be here's my flatbed attachment to give me more working space and for storage we just store it like this most machines come with the attachment i don't know about all of them but i think they do this is how they usually look and this can be a storage compartment. Mine has one as well. But then, like I said, when you change it out for your table, this is how it's gonna look. 
Here I have my presser foot, and depending on what you're sewing will depend on what presser foot you use. Back here is the presser foot lever, and you press this when you want to change out the presser foot. And then when you want to put it back on, you would lift this. See that little rod right there? That rod is going to go in that slot, but you have to be holding your presser foot slot, presser foot lever, to open up the slot so that your presser foot can go into that. Your rod can go into the slot. See how it's locked now? Unlock, lock, unlock. Here's my pattern selection dial, which I can do manually, but on the newer models, it's digital and you pick from here. the stitches for mine that I can choose from and then depending on what I want will depend on how I turn my knob. Now earlier I showed you my stitch width dial. Well this is my stitch length dial right here. And shout out to Little Bear who made me my little pin cushion when she was starting to sew and it's a perfect little attachment for my sewing machine so I could just quickly put my pins in there when I need to. This little screw right here is the buttonhole fine adjustment which I haven't had to use yet and on the newer model I haven't seen it at all. Every machine is going to have the hand wheel on the side and it's used to manually lower and raise the needle and we notice that it also moves the dog feet up and down when you use it. Here's the main power switch to the machines. And here are the jacks. This is the jack for the power on the new machine. And then this is the jack for the power on the foot control. Mine has one jack that splits into two lines, one for the power and then one for the foot control. And again, mine is the older model. On the newer machine, you don't even need to use the hand wheel. This button right here will raise your needle up or down. Here is the back stitch button on the newer model. But on mine, I have this reverse sewing lever that I have to push when I want to back stitch. Back here is the presser foot lever. This is what's going to raise and lower your presser foot. In the back of your machine is where you'll find the buttonhole lever. I don't have a lever for my feed dogs or a button for them other than my hand wheel, but Little Bear's machine does. This is the lever for her feed dogs. This is to drop them and this is to raise them. This is her buttonhole lever. This is the foot presser lever for hers. And last, but certainly not least, every machine is going to come equipped with your foot controller, which you're going to press with your foot so that you can sew. This is what gets your machine going. Typically, the harder you press on the foot control, the faster your machine will go. And then if you barely push down, then the slower it goes. I hope you found this video useful and don't forget to like and share. Thanks. Come again. Toodles.